For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit nba.com 75 to learn more. You can tell when your car battery's dying. But with your water heater, you'll never know until it starts leaking. Before you buy another tank, consider a Navian tankless water heater. No storage tank to heat or leak. Lower energy bills and endless hot water for spa-like comfort. All backed by Navian's strong warranty. If your water heater is over 8 years old, it's time to check out Navian at tanklessmadesimple.com. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. So there was a, uh, a failed Astra rocket launch on Friday in Alaska. Uh, I don't know much about who these people are, what they're doing, but hey, listen, I love people trying to launch things and go into space and explore strange new worlds. It says, Astra, we're on a mission to launch a new generation of space services to observe, connect, and improve life on Earth. Okay, cool. You know, probably what, you know, like satellites and stuff. Follow uh, them on Instagram, Astra Space. I don't know if anyone's going to really want to follow them on Instagram and really have a lot of hope because their their rocket blasted off, then flipped around, quickly fell to the earth and exploded. Oh, that didn't work out as planned. No, I think Astra, guess what? Uh, I'm going to wait for Elon before I hop on any of your rockets. Rocket launch in Kodiak, Alaska. Pretty cool. Uh-oh, Failure. See if we see anything coming down here. Yeah, here it comes. Whoa. Ooh. That's not cool. Holy mackerel. That's oh, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They sound like the most <laughs> underwhelmed people ever. I'm yeah. looking at the video. I thought, okay, well, maybe it's just nothing special. It's a giant explosion. A rocket yeah. explodes. Oh, that's unfortunate. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. bummer. This would be me. Yeah. 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 yeah, I guess they're really chill up there in Alaska. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that was quite an explosion. And quite, yeah, that did not work. Yeah, if that thing, did, this, would, this is what I would sound like. Ah! Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah failure. Well, yeah, that just happened. <laughs> it okay. seems so underwhelmed by that. Yeah, well, that's a thing. Bummer yeah. City. Yeah. No one was in that, I guess, then, huh? Uh, I, I, I don't believe so. If they're if doing services, maybe they're just like, you know, launching satellites or, or that's their goal. So, yeah, I don't think they're launching astronauts from Kodiak, Alaska. Uh, I, I, it, I, I would be very surprised if they're doing that. I like that Elon, Elon Musk uh, tweeted at them after everything, that, after this, you know, failure happened. He said, hey, sorry to hear that. I'm sure you'll figure it out, though. Took us four launches to reach orbit. Rockets are hard. <laughs> Rockets are hard. I'm, that's probably uh, more understated than the guy's reaction to the explosion. Yeah. Rockets are hard. Wow. Well, you know... I think he was trying to be comforting. No, it, I, I think so. I don't yeah. think he was being a douche. Yeah, but he's, he's probably right. Like, rockets probably are very difficult. Yeah, rockets are hard. <laughs> I have to give Elon credit for a guy that appears to be a very brilliant person. He is able to really dumb himself down for us, uh, us folks. I do appreciate that because it does feel like rockets would be hard. Right, I'll say a bunch so, of stuff. I'm like, Elon, I don't understand what you're saying. He goes, rockets are hard. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's probably why they weren't as freaked out because there wasn't anyone in them. Thankfully, yeah. nobody was in there. Yeah. But I'd still freak out when I see a giant explosion. Yeah, exactly. Because that could have landed. It could have it could have landed on something. You know, well, like maybe not really in Alaska. Well, that's a good point. Maybe a moose. Well, it's, especially because it just looks like a little thing coming down. Like you don't think it's going to explode. Like you think it's just going to fall. 
Right, yeah, but then like the explosion's yeah. pretty epic. Yeah, because the, there's a lot of the fuel and all that. Yeah, that was pretty, that was, that, yeah. I'm with you, Steve. I would have been like, whoa, what the hell? Rockets are hard. Rockets are indeed hard. <laughs> we got a woman. She got arrested for cutting off her own hand. Okay. Steve will tell you all about this. He's got the mix report for you at 617 on The Rock. Hands are hard. Hands are hard. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. I need a change. You've been cold to me too many times. You're wasting money. You're a leaker. So I'm replacing you with a new Navian tankless water heater. No more cold shoulders. No more leaks. Just spa-like comfort and Navian peace of mind. And oh... I want you out today. When you're ready for a change, ask your plumber about Navian or visit tanklessmadesimple.com. For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season where greatness lives on in every game. Visit nba.com slash 75 to learn more. 99.9 KISW, the rock of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Migs Report. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Mercedes Benz of Seattle and happy national cream filled donut day oh yes put that cream in that donut. i'm not a big cream filled donut kind of guy oh that's my fave what do you like the boston cream one vanilla fr- actually vanilla cream yeah vanilla the white the straight white cream mm-hmm. what is the boston cream what does that it's taste bavarian like? cream oh i don't yeah. just taste like miserable yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it tastes, tastes like well. oh i see what you did there yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you thought there was a joke oh. there a joke there. I don't know if it was a good one, but it was there. Yeah. Was, it was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I, I, vanilla I, I, cream. I, yeah. So Bavarian cream. You know it if you've had it. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's an eclairs. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it, and then somehow Boston said we'll put it in a donut, and it became a Boston cream, even though Bavaria made made the cream in the first place, right? And shouldn't it taste like a pretzel if it's from Bavaria? Um, oh, I don't know. Mm. Either. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, what, a jelly donut. That's pretty. Is that a? That's not a cream. Damn it. Yeah, it's jelly. You know, rockets are hard. Yeah, rockets are hard. Yeah. Cream is difficult. Yeah, that's, that's what I've learned this that's morning. That's what it is. I'm just going to stick with my glazed donut. Yeah. Nice. No cream involved. <laughs> Let's head on over to wow. Slovenia, where there's a 22 year old woman in a little bit of trouble with the law because she cut off her own hand. What? Wait, wait, what? She went to the hospital, she said, in a bad gardening accident and it accidentally cut off her left hand with a saw. Uh, the surgeons were able to reattach it, but it doesn't work like it used to. So she filed claims with five insurance companies saying that she had policies with all of them about a year earlier. And she was looking at a total of about one point two million dollars. And that's when they decided to start investigating this woman's claims because it looks like she cut on cut off her hand on purpose as part of an insurance scam. Oh, there was a bunch of inconsistencies in her story. And I guess a few days before the accident, her boyfriend had searched online about how artificial hands work. A coincidence. Oh, my God. You gotta be, are you that stupid? Yes, they are. Well, on Friday, she was sentenced to two years in jail for insurance fraud. Her boyfriend got three years in prison for apparently masterminding the scam and convincing her to do it. So this wasn't even her idea. It was her boyfriend that's like, yo, we should do this. You can make a bunch of money. And he, so, yeah, that is, oh, that's man. Love. I, I don't know, man. I love my wife. I don't know if I cut off her, my own hand just for insurance money. Whoa, purposes. dude. What kind of dude could you, convince yes. somebody to do that? I don't know. I mean, that is, whoa, man. You must be packing. <laughs> oh, that's what it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This might be the easiest drug bust ever, and it happened in Australia. Uh, some guy was transporting a bunch of meth, 600 pounds of meth in his van. Now, if you're going to be driving around with 600 pounds of meth, you should probably pay attention to what's going on on the road because, well, he rammed his van into two cop cars. Of course, unintentionally. And now he's going to be facing about six years in prison. He had $145 million worth of drugs in that van. That is a lot of meth. And they even said this was easily the easiest drug bust that we've ever made. Absolutely incredible. Well, you know what? you got to get the right driver. It's very important to get the right driver. 
Oh, man, yeah, I get the right quarterback, too, and I think we learned yesterday. Seahawks, I don't know if you know this, but we have a very good quarterback. Do we really? Man, they all, wow. they, what, the, the big slogan was let Russ cook. Yeah. I'm eating whatever he's cooking. Yeah. Yeah, Holy baby. smokes, what a game yesterday. That was a lot of fun to watch. He went 31 for 35, 322 yards, four touchdowns. He was the best runner on the team as well. It was just a Russell Wilson performance on the offense and then a Jamal Adams performance on the defense as they beat uh, the Atlanta Falcons. And, and very, I mean, it, the game ended 38-25, but it was. It felt like it was a more dominant performance was, than even that. Yeah, it was totally lopsided because they, you know, they were let. They, they, you know, at the end of the game, those guys were just running down the field on side kicks, but it was all desperation points. And the crazy part, I mean, when you look at the stats, though, I mean, they had like 500 yards of offense, so it wasn't like as if the Falcons didn't perform well. It was just when it mattered, Seahawks stepped up. I mean, when it was fourth down conversion, shut them down every single time. Yeah, looking good on third down as well. Yeah, it was a fun game to watch. That's for sure. Yeah, those yards in that score doesn't reflect the dominance. And, and Wilson would have been perfect if he didn't throw the ball to DK Metcalf. I mean, DK played well. Don't get me wrong. No, that was that one time. Yeah. There was the one where they they, yeah. they uh, compared his hands to feet. Yeah. Understandably so. Yeah. I was very shocked that he didn't catch that one, but uh, uh, he missed four of his passes as a DK, but otherwise he was 27 to 27 when you think about it. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, and DK did make up for it. Oh, hell yeah. He looked yeah. great with that touchdown. And also getting that, that first down when he just stretched his arm out. That was pretty yeah, That's right, man. But I think everybody's talking about Jamal Adams. Should we, should we send another draft pick to the Jets? That guy's incredible. Yeah, I, apparently that uh, was a good deal for us so far. I, that was a wise move. He was everywhere. I almost yeah. thought there was two of them at one point. Yeah. I was like, how was this guy there? Oh, now he's over there. And he's, it just it was a lot of fun to watch that dude. A lot of intensity. And he might be the new identity of that defense. Yeah. I would say. Uh, he had uh, 12 tackles, one sack, two quarterback hits, two tackles for a loss. Could have had an interception as well. I mean, the dude looked great out there. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very excited about the fact that uh, he's on the team and they're letting Russ cook. And it, it, it was exactly what I'd hoped for, for, you know, for that game. And you speak of Jamal Adams and Russell Wilson. I love this question from uh, Joe Fan uh, during the press conference with Jamal Adams. He's uh, NBC Sports. Northwest reporter for the Seahawks. He asked a question to Jamal Adams that gave him an opportunity to take a shot at his old team, the New York Jets. Hey, Jamal, what's it like on the sideline when you're watching Russ, you know, throw it, chuck it around, and all those guys make plays and put up 38 points? <laughs> I'm not used to it, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's exciting. You know, it's exciting mm-hmm. to know um, when we do come off the field, we can make our adjustments, catch a breather. You know, for Russ to go out there and do what he do what he he's always done. I, I'm just happy to be a part of this organization, man. And these guys were telling me they're they're happy I'm here, but I'm 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 really happy I'm here, man. I'm I just see so much talent, so much uh, great success coming our way. Um, as long as we just continue to keep our head down and continue to strive. But obviously, it's only one game. One and no, that's what matters. Uh, we got to, you know, clean this, clean up the, this film and then get better for next week. Eh, there you go. Jamal Adams, new member of the Seattle Seahawks. I imagine a lot of 33 jerseys were purchased uh, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, and I love the kid's attitude because that was a shot, but very subtle. Just not used to it. Right. And I mean, they took, you know, like, you know Greg Williams, the defensive uh, guy for the for the Jets, he was just like, oh, he's going to be bored in Seattle. I don't think he was bored at all. Yeah. <laughs> he was pretty busy out there, and he looked fantastic. Also looking great, as always, is Tyler Lockett. Just unassuming, but, you know, gets 92 yards. He's 8 of 8 on his catches. So yeah. That's pretty awesome. He's solid. Uh, welcome Greg Olson to the team. Tight oh, end. I like this. How about that touchdown catch where it was just like he wasn't looking? All of a sudden, Russell just zips one at him, turns around, catches it for a touchdown. And then after the game, he's interviewed about that catch. And I'm not sure if he's still talking about football when asked about his touchdown reception. Yeah, I had a feeling he was gonna, that he was coming to me if we got the right look. I got a little banged around getting off the line. I didn't have a real clean release. So I was kind of weaving through and I kind of just broke it off short. And then the ball was just like stuck on my face. So I don't. that was one of those where the ball kind of catches itself. I get why he's doing broadcasting when he wasn't playing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, can, can you just describe his catches all the time like that? This guy's got a job at Pornhub, I'll tell you that. Get banged around, the ball's yeah. on his face. He needs a clean release, Steve. Yeah. We'll go more into the, the get more into the Seahawks win with uh, Mitch Levy. He'll be joining us at 7-17 this morning to recap the Hawks game. But looking good after game one, game two is going to be happening on Sunday Night Football. Yeah. As they'll take on 
the Cam Newton led New England Patriots. I totally, did win. I totally forgot he was on the Patriots. Oh yeah, I mean he uh, he, he, he runs around like crazy. I mean I, he threw a couple balls, but for the most part it was like he was a running back out there. But he uh, led the, the the Patriots to a big win, twenty one to eleven over uh, Miami, which a lot of people are happy because Tom Brady lost. Well, if you're a, uh, a Patriots fan, you're happy. I'm sure Joe yeah. is. Patriots lost. Tom Brady threw two interceptions in his uh, Tampa Bay Bucks debut. Oops. Yeah. Uh, Cam Newton was not a happy camper at the end of the game, though. I don't know if you caught any of the game. I didn't see that. Uh, he got into a little bit of a skirmish with one of the Miami players, and they ripped his necklace. And so he's just lost his mind out there. It was kind of entertaining to watch because I don't think the commentators at first realized that. So they're just like, oh, first game, you know, it was very intense. He lost a bunch of games with Carolina. You could tell there's intensity in him. But it's like, I think he's intense and also the fact that somebody ripped his necklace. He's not very happy about it. Yeah, that. I like when they try to make up reasons for somebody doing something, and you find out it had nothing to do with what they, what they were talking about. Well, yeah, because they probably had no idea at the time and then realize you gotta say something in the booth right you gotta you gotta analyze that moment yeah i was watching the seahawks game i see like in the ticker it says that a player on the lions got ejected for hit, hitting an official i don't know if you saw that i did see that yeah did you watch what happened i didn't see what happened i only oh, saw the I, ticker thing what did he do i mean i understand there's rules but i mean when you watch it so in the second quarter of the lions bears game there's a linebacker for uh uh for for the Lions, uh, Jamie Collins. He was ejected because he was trying to demonstrate to the ref what the Bears player did to him with the hit. And so he, like, lightly taps his helmet into the stomach area of the ref. And the ref just freaks out, oh. throws the flag. He's ejected from the game for him. Oh, the yeah, ref. definitely, dude. He's, that that, that mean, doesn't look like he's trying to be a jerk. I get there's rules, but you, come on. Yeah, especially. I thought it was way worse when I read the ticker. Yeah, I did too. Unless he, and the only thing I can think of is the ref didn't hear what he was saying before he ducked his head. He probably said, "Hey, let me show you what he did," and the ref did not hear that and just thought, "Oh, here's this guy coming and headbutting me." But even still, I barely I, touched him. I know it really is. Oh, I know, man. I I don't I don't know why they refs can't get together and go. Wait a second, Jimmy. Hold like, on. He I'm, didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could kind of be like, okay, I get what you're trying to do, dude. Don't ever do that again. But whatever. I mean, like, it's not a Seahawks. So I don't really care that much. That's a good point, the Lions. <laughs> hey, how about the Mariners, man? Another big win, beating the Diamondbacks seven to three. They took two or three over the weekend because the Dodgers beat Houston yesterday. The Mariners a game and a half back for playoff spot. Isn't that insane? It, it's yeah, it's awesome. They got a ten game homestand that starts so. Oh, that's Cardboard the, cutouts, you got to step it up. Yeah, that's the season. I mean, I, I think there's only like, what, 13-ish games left or something like that? Play against the A's today. they got a doubleheader that starts at uh, 2 o'clock today, so we'll see what happens with that. That's very Whoa. exciting. NHL Stanley Cup uh, playoffs, you know, in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals yesterday. Tampa Bay beat the Islanders 4-1. to They have a 3-1 series yeah. lead. And tonight, Dallas can wrap it up against the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, they have a 3-1 series lead. So right now, barring any miracles, it could be a, a Tampa Bay versus Dallas Stanley Cup final. Wow. As far as weather, 73 degrees, and uh, that is the major report, of course. The air quality is not going to be all that great today. Supposed to get a little better. Yes. Uh, I, you know, tonight or whatever. I don't know. I heard something about that. Oh, someone corrected me. It's not a necklace. It's a chain. Oh, oh right. Guys I, I, wear chains. I'm, Girls I'm, wear I'm, necklaces. I'm jewelry clueless. I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't you wear a chain around your neck? Like... Hey, buddy. I mean, uh, do I have to do I have to call the Zane Company? Uh, all right. I, mean, I wear yeah. a rubber wedding ring. I'm clearly not yeah. the guy that you're coming to for jewelry <laughs> yeah. expertise. Yeah. Do I have to get Tom Shane in this room to educate you on what a necklace nice. and a chain? Yeah, it's Come not on. called a pearl chain. Ah, you're right. It's oh, not yeah. called a pearl chain, is it? Yeah. Boom. But then again, <laughs> the person wearing the pearl chain is. It, it might just be gender. Is it a gender thing? Guys wear chains. Girls wear necklaces. I don't know. Hell, if I know. I mean, that's again, what I wear a rubber ring around my uh, finger. <laughs> you sound like Greg Olson now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting banged up around here, BJ. Wow. Hey, what do you think about the crowd noise? I, you know, I it, it felt okay to me. The game, I didn't yeah, it didn't bother me. Either. Somebody said to somebody uh, said to me it sounded horrible. Like well, some face, somebody Facebooked me and said, "God, that crowd noise was horrible." It just shows that people just want to complain about anything. I saw someone was like, "Can they turn the crowd noise down?" I'm like, it wasn't louder than it would be if they were actual fans, and I thought it added like a nice kind of like you know background noise to the to the. To the broadcast. Out of all the sports, because of how football is watched with all the cameras, the crowd noise and the camera angles were like, I felt like I was watching a regular game. Yeah, I kind of wish they would do what the NHL did, though, and put some kind of tarp or some kind of bannering over the empty seats. The only time you really notice is when they go for like the extra point. That's and when you're just like, this is pathetic because, <laughs> you know, there's nobody out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only time where I felt like the illusion was gone. 
but I mean, I'm not gonna. That, that's not gonna really bug me that much. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, it's that, that I noticed that too, Steve. But I, I really, it didn't get to me at all. I have to say, it didn't. It, I, and and it, it has affected me with the other sports I've watched. Like I've really noticed it, but mm-hmm. somehow with football, I didn't. What I noticed with football when we watched the XFL was when they didn't have all the cameras. Right. You you felt like you were watching a different game because they had cameras at different angles and it, yeah. it felt more like a, I don't know, a high school football game, some of those XFL games. Yeah, but for the most part, I mean, if, I, at times I forgot there was nobody in the stadium. Me too. And, and I thought it was entertaining. Yeah, I like the crowd noise. I, I actually th- I think it's much better to have that. Otherwise, it feels like you're watching like Arrested Development, but for sports. It's like, where's the damn <laughs> That actually track? is a pretty good analogy, I actually have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Analogies yeah. are hard. They, you, you, they are. <laughs> but you did it. Well, I don't know if you heard about Philadelphia Phillies pitcher Zach Wheeler. How about this guy? He is not going to pitch against the Florida Marlins tonight. And I believe the Marlins are also in a run for a playoff spot. So it's, uh, it's, getting, it's getting busy down in baseball, at least if you care. Uh, here's why he's not pitching. He injured the nail on his right middle finger while he was... Putting on his pants last Wednesday, so that's why huh? he, he hurt himself putting on his pants, so he can't pitch. Wow! Yeah, they're in second place, so I mean, like, yeah, you know, they're they're right now in the playoffs, but I mean, they yeah, got some they, people uh, uh, nipping at their butts. Yeah, so that's that. Yeah, they're they're fighting. They're they're fighting for a uh, lot. Yeah, like I said, they're in they're in the, they're in the situation. So do you, was it like you like reached down to grab him and like just like hooked and, his and nail and or something? Yeah, probably ripped his finger a bit. Or how tight are his jeans? Oh, I, I, I don't know. Let's ask Greg Olson. Um, <laughs> Getting banged around there. Uh, Joe Girardi, the manager, said, uh, our fear is if they, he loses the nail, it could be the rest of the season. And he's like, you know, this is, a, of course, a shortened season. You can't make this up. Where you know, pretty much the playoffs are starting very soon. Um, so, yeah, uh, he, he, they, they, they're going to keep him out just for preventative measures so that he can pitch later on this season. That's got to go up there in, like, the, the old lore of bad injuries for athletes. Yeah. I, I, first one I thought of was, like, remember John Brockman, former Husky basketball player, great great player. I think he still coaches around town as well. I think it's the home mission. He hurt his hand when he was cutting open a Christmas gift because of one of those annoying packages, and he had to pull out the, yeah. the knife oh, and slice yeah. his hand. Then, of course, you got Malik McDowell from the, well, formerly of the Seahawks, hurt himself riding an ATV, never did anything with the team. That's right. That's probably oh, the yeah. dumbest. That was the dumbest. Uh, eh. Now, there are injuries that I don't believe are the real injuries. Because yeah. was it Kaz Sasaki, former closer for the Mariners, who supposedly tripped up the stairs or something like that? I think it was him. And then later on, you found out, no, that's not how he injured himself. He didn't trip up the stairs with suitcases. It may, it, it may have been another reason, which I won't say because it's, uh, it's not as cool of a reason. It's more like, dude, what are you doing, you idiot? Um, what was it, like a challenge to see who could jump up the steps the quickest? <laughs> it was, I think. I've done that with my friends. Sometimes. Just running up the stairs. I've well, done that. Like a kangaroo. Sometimes in sports you have contracts. And I won't right. say that it happened with this guy, but sometimes you have contracts that if you drink a little too much and hurt yourself, you don't get paid. Yeah. So that's why all of a sudden you may find another way to have hurt yourself. <laughs> and don't want to tell anybody how you did it. Any yeah. other way. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, that, that's a thing that happens in sports. On Friday, Steve did get this one wrong. What is the piece of metal on a bridle that goes into the horse's mouth? Ball gag? No. Uh, wow. A, a muzzle? No. Ventures? No. No, Steve? No. Gosh, he was really mad. very aggressive. Yeah. No. Why are you wrong? Get off the carpet. Uh, the answer is bit. You want a shot at beating Steve? You got it. 206 421 Rock. We're playing Beat Migs. We'll do that at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast is brought to you by bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagne, who's ready to answer your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, is it true that if you file for bankruptcy once, you can't file again? Even if you filed bankruptcy before, you can almost certainly file bankruptcy again. Different types of bankruptcies have different time limits between filings. In Chapter 7, full bankruptcy, you can only file Chapter 7 once every eight years. However, you can always, almost always file a Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 cases can be filed uh, immediately following a Chapter 7. They can be filed immediately following a prior Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 is a reorganization plan, so there will be some type of monthly payment, but it's based on your budget and your ability to afford that payment. So Chapter 13 is an option in almost all cases, uh, even with a prior bankruptcy filing. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. 
For the last 75 seasons, the NBA has been getting greater. It's been crossing over, crossing borders, bending minds, breaking barriers, and shattering expectations. Because if the league's taught us one thing, it's that we can't predict anything. So don't miss one minute of the 75th anniversary season, where greatness lives on in every game. Visit nba.com slash 75 to learn more. 